The Cosmic Adventures of Captain Hobb by Cameron James Drury. Narrated by Cameron James Drury. Chapter 2. The Impact. The beautiful day, which had been widely considered the finest of the summer season so far, quickly transitioned into dreariness by the evening as storm clouds marched sharply in from the west as though summoned to battle. Raindrops began to pelt the town as its inhabitants eagerly left their workshops, umbrella in hand. Poor Billy Willie the Butcher, a large burly fellow, was caught in the storm as he locked up his shop and had to ask the elderly Miss Wallace in the neighboring shop to escort him home under a bright, conspicuously pink umbrella. In the distance, concealed in an alleyway, Doug the mailman caught sight of the emasculating spectacle and yelled, Hey Butcher, tomorrow you'll probably forget your pants, and when you see the pair I have to lend you, you won't want them. The butcher frowned as rain streamed down his egg-like head like rivers as Mrs. Wallace led him down the lamp-lit street. The Crockett's arrived at the Oswald residence just as the rain began, and unlike forgetful Billy Willie the butcher, Freddie had ensured that he had an umbrella. He didn't want anything to ruin Margaret's new emerald dress and elegant white satin gloves he had purchased earlier that afternoon, which had cheered her up quite a bit. As the Crockett's and Oswald's cordially greeted each other in the doorway of the charming cottage, thunder began ominously rolling overhead, and as the couple settled in to their evening of dinner and festivities, a torrential downpour soon followed. Of course, not even the noisiest storm could stir the slumber of Freddy's mighty little beast in his domain. Wigglesworth was still in a blissful sleep, exhausted from his mischievous morning activities. He lay slumped over and twisted upon his kingly bed, his twitching limbs and snarling snout denoting a rather intense dream. Whatever Wigglesworth was dreaming about, he was surely gaining the upper hand over the phantasms of his rudimentary mind. Outside of the darkened, uncurtained window, a green light suddenly began to glow, distinct from the lightning that was sporadically illuminating the room like an old-fashioned camera bowl. It gave his already garishly painted and decorated room a reddish hue, making it look like some nightmarish scene from a demented carnival. As the light grew brighter and brighter, the thunder and lightning crashed louder and louder. Suddenly, in a crescendo of light, sound and chaos, a huge object pierced its way through the room's window, shattering the glass like a silver bullet as an earth-shattering peal of thunder shook the room and struck over the town like a whip. Wigglesworth immediately opened his little eyes and snapped up onto all four paws in one swift motion, his body alert and his tail straight and stiff. His ferret heart was pounding as a war drum, and his mouth was panting, unsure of what had just happened, unsure why the room felt so warm all of a sudden. A pulsating green light radiated from the center of the room, obscured by whirling smoke. Wigglesworth had just slid down the side of his cage for a better look when he realized that his cage door was slightly ajar. The ferret's wandering eyes widened with excitement as he promptly slithered out of his cage and plopped onto the floor below. After making contact with the floor beneath, he sat upright on his hind legs and straightened his long neck. While squealing in glee at his long-awaited freedom, Wigglesworth took a long, hard look at the mysterious intruder. A long, silver metallic mass lay in the center of the room, shrouded in steam and smoke. An ominous aura surrounded the object, which was illuminated at the top and bottom by slowly blinking green lights. Three curved fins lay at one end and a sharp point at the other, and in between a long sleek body. The heavy sound of an engine, not made by human hands, or ferrets for that matter, was slowly powering down with a sort of choking sound until it loudly clanked to a sudden halt. The green lights turned to yellow, and a rash of steam began to bellow alarmingly thick from beneath the monster. Wigglesworth flinched but stood his ground, as he would not be deterred by fear. He came from a long line of courageous and sturdy ferrets, and he would not sully his fine lineage by tucking tail and running. The blinking yellow lights then turned to an ominous red, which fascinated him. Red was the only color he and all his brethren could see, other than gray. Wigglesworth's eyes widened and focused on the red lights, his ears perking up curiously. Caution went out for the moment, however, as he stayed in place, widening his little paws and arching his back, 
hoping to intimidate the unknown object and assert his dominance over his turf. A rectangular portion of the silver, metallic behemoth was slowly sliding open, belching out steam and gas, a gatch which smelled curiously like burnt cherries. Wigglesworth peered intently at the opening, apparently a doorway, trying to discern if a toy or food was involved. His owner, Freddy Crockett, had treated him to a never-ending succession of meats and plushies, so he now wondered if something delectable lay in the mysterious machine. Drawn by the smell of cherries, Wigglesworth carefully darted toward the opening. He hesitated a moment, due to the extreme heat of the steaming metal surface on his little paws, then mustered up his strength and courage and launched himself inside. Wigglesworth picked himself up. He had landed at the beginning of a corridor. It was warm and musty, with light strips in hues of red, purple, and green, providing dim and flickering illumination along the corridor. Wigglesworth proceeded forward fearlessly, his long body slithering quickly through the labyrinth. Each corridor connected to another in sharp, angular fashion, reminding the ferret of the intricate mazes that Freddy sometimes lay out for him. Following the increasingly strong scent of cherries, Wigglesworth finally padded along past several little doors into a large anteroom, shaped like a dome. The low hum of electronics could be heard, and a multitude of colorful lights blinked out of the darkness, embedded in consoles lining the sleek cabin. Wigglesworth made his way around the room, sniffing all around with head bent low, determined to find the source of that heavenly cherry smell. A strange new scent suddenly entered the ferret's nostrils, causing him to stop dead in his tracks. Just ahead, in the center of the room, two figures sat hunched over in the darkness, not two paces from Wigglesworth. Strapped into their seats, they sat motionless and seemingly unconscious, their faces obscured by round, glass helmets from which reflected the many blinking lights of the cabin. They, whatever they were, seemed to match Wigglesworth almost exactly in size and proportion. In fact, Wigglesworth saw that the figures looked just like the lizard plushie Freddy had given him just a few hours earlier. Noting this similarity, he dashed over eagerly with an insatiably savage desire to shred the strange creatures into a thousand pieces. Just as he was about to sink his little fangs into one of the creature's arms, however, he noticed something infinitely more interesting and stopped in his tracks. Behind the creatures, a shiny, red, circular object, roughly the size of a marble, rested upon a raised platform. It was as smooth as polished glass, and its translucent, strangely glowing surface hypnotized the ferret. Not only was it red, but it was the source of that delicious cherry smell. Cherry, which Freddy had forbidden Wigglesworth to ever eat, but attracted him so. Without a second thought, Wigglesworth slid past the unconscious beings and over to the platform like a snake. His eyes widened and his little snout dripped saliva onto the monotone metal floor as he adored the ruby-red glow and tantalizing scent, opening his mouth wide to expose razor-sharp little teeth. As Wigglesworth raised himself upright, extended his long neck, and bit down onto the orb, the ferret realized with sudden disappointment that it was not a cherry, but rather a rock-hard object which tasted like soap. At the exact moment that disappointment overwhelmed him, something very strange happened. A rush of electricity surged from the orb through Wigglesworth's hefty little frame, causing his fur to stand straight up and his little body to shake and tremble. A high-pitched, surprised whelp escaped his snout as he was lifted into the air, twisting and turning. Bright lights filled the cabin like exploding fireworks as little Wigglesworth began spinning his high-pitched squeal sounding like a little mouse riding on a ceiling fan at full speed. The multicolored lights dotting the electronic consoles nearby began to go haywire, their once low hum rising to a pitch and fluctuating spastically. The force of spinning Wigglesworth up was suddenly released, and the little ferret slammed onto the floor as the red orb shot out of his snout like a pro bowler's throw. Mr. Wigglesworth lay motionless, completely unconscious, and utterly alone on the floor of an alien rocket ship from outer space.